Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Getting a lot of these out. I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. I've been uh, really getting back into the swing of things of Vintage Story and a few milestones have really kind of turned my uh, turned me around. I, I was a little bit um, burnt out on Vintage, I think, especially when I found out how many how much fat I needed to get the windmill going. But uh, hey, it's 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 built, and I think this episode for me um, really kind of like underlined uh that i am officially established and i guess i'll talk a little bit about what that means for me later but um i mean animal husbandry is to me the equivalent of like space rocketry in a vintage story it, it just feels like such an advanced idea because like you know it's a survival game and a lot of the time you spend uh in this game has to do with feeding yourself and that's it's just very true and creature comforts as well but for the most part feeding yourself um and so when you get to a point where you're able to uh, sustain not only yourself but other mouths uh i think that really underlines like you know you've done it you you accomplished a lot the the process is finally kind of done but uh, let me talk a little bit about uh what i'm doing here i tried this i want to experiment a little bit with um, powered mechanisms and I wanted to try a axle gear angle on here as opposed to just a large wheel and uh, as you can see it didn't work the the gear stopped right away as soon as I tried it because uh, the, the fact of the matter is the windmill itself is not strong enough to it, it doesn't have enough torque to pull the kern um, and so you want to have a small to large gear ratio in order to you know turn the the torque of the the windmill into uh, I guess a more reliable power source. I don't know how these things work. I'm sure someone in the comments uh, is going to explain to me exactly how it works. Um, but uh, yeah, it might fall on deaf ears slightly because I, I will not retain the information. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're getting to our our flax. We're going to be feeding some chickens. I like to you know include some of this stuff because I don't like to necessarily take it for granted. This is something that I've worked towards. You know feeding other animals and so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take it for granted when how many times I've, i'm feeding the animals and also i like to keep you updated on these things you can see our, our windmill is it really just legit looks like a windmill and i'm very very proud of it um so that uh you know i'm, I'm feeling good about it and you can see here um one of our sheep the baby sheep has a is fully grown now so it it only it doesn't take very long um, and in the session, I wanted to uh, kind of check a box that has been pending for a long time is I wanted to get salt. I talked a little bit about this in the last episode. And you can see me going through all of my map pins, trying to figure out which one would be the one to, to grab this halite rock, which turns into salt, um, both when mined and then when crushed um, by our kern. Uh, and I set out in order to find salt. And I've included this, uh, you know, one nice thing about having sheep is I no longer care or uh, concern myself with the well-being of the local fauna and uh, therefore I will be getting a lot more fat and meat um, for my, my efforts. I found this here owl treasure chest, but it was at the back of this merchant and we can see here, oops. So, you know, um, I have been on the beta for the last few episodes and <laughs> this is killing this ram again. Um, and uh, it has, for the most part, been running very smoothly, but there are a couple of hiccups here and there, and that was certainly one of them. I didn't try to talk to the merchant again, and I don't think I will until maybe there's a, a bit more of a stable branch. Um, I have been taking kind of a wild risk by playing um, this save with uh, on the beta, but it has worked out for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, sweep it under the carpet of all's well that ends well i suppose uh i've marked this this is a i found this uh by prospecting this was a copper vein initially but it said that there was halite poor halite but halite all the same so i began digging uh digging down and uh you know no luck unfortunately and then i find this here tunnel um, or cave system i suppose and cave systems i mean i've shied away from them but uh i decided to try my luck here instead and uh, I gotta clear out a couple of these gremlins um, before I get my hands dirty with the cave itself. But uh, yeah, not nothing here, unfortunately. So I double back, and hey, you know, 
I'm, I'm checking with the prospector's pick occasionally, but it seems to me more luck was had by just exploring the cave system itself. So I go down a bit, and of course there's more gremlins. I know they're called dwellers, but they're just very gremlin-like to me. And uh, just kind of checking things out. Not, not much over there, except more to fight and hurt me. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty elaborate cave system, and it goes down, way down. In fact, this cave system went down all the way to, I guess, the vintage story equivalent of bedrock. So uh, I have now sort of seen the bottom of the world, although uh, not really in detail. Um, but I, I check out one of these kind of like downward facing cave systems all the way down. And I guess when I come back, because I died here, I also got some saltpeter. I was kind of confused because I was like, oh good, this is salt, right? No, it's saltpeter. I know that's confusing, but uh, saltpeter is used for gunpowder as well as fertilization. So I could make bombs if I really wanted to, but uh, I, I think a better use of it is to probably fertilize my garden. I don't expect or plan to make any explosives. But yeah, this, uh, this cave went all the way down to the very bottom of the world and I found um, for the first time or I saw for the first time lava which is a novel thing um, you know it's it's it is an interesting comparison I can't help but com compare it to Minecraft occasionally but uh, you know Minecraft I'm sure I saw Minecraft uh, lava within the first 20 hours for sure I mean it, you know you're gonna obviously the first thing you want to do when you start up Minecraft is probably dig down and dig aggressively and get some diamonds and get all the stuff and then eventually you're gonna see some lava vintage story we're on like hour 80 is the first time i see lava because you know the underground is a lot scarier but hey here's some halite i was really excited about this so i went ahead and walled off the whole section i didn't want to have to you know i didn't want to be harassed while i was digging but unfortunately in all of the process of Trying to find how light our pickaxe was pretty much near its the, the end of its rope, and I didn't have a spare, so I had to find. Uh, you know, I marked it on the map. I don't know if I included that footage, but uh, I'm letting you know now. And then I saw this thing. What a disturbing and novel creature! I hate it. Uh, also, that siren bell sound really kind of just sounds like every single action trailer for a movie I've seen in the last, like, 10 years. Uh, you can't unhear it now, I think. But it's just like, imagine that siren sound and then just like a bunch of jump cuts between action scenes while, like, someone's trying to escape a black hole or some, some nonsense. Anyway. <laughs> um... Uh, so I go ahead and make some more pickaxes. I try to upgrade the windmill, but I find actually that I can't. So this windmill is fully upgraded. And, uh, you know, I decide to try and uh, do a little bit of tinkering with our mechanisms. But I put the salt in our kern um, instead of the bone meal. Actually, I think I, at this point I've, I've fully grinded the, the bone meal. So though this the kern is slow, it is consistent. And um, it is automatic. So, you know, slow and steady wins the race especially when it comes to grinding your your substances uh someone's gonna take that out of context but anyway i i look at the try and uh actually salting our our meats we have some red meats from the the sheep the fauna that i killed also here's i i don't know if i included the previous footage but no this is the first time i figure out someone my friend explained to me how to finally clean my crock pot. I'm sure people have explained to me in the comments several times and I just always forget, but I finally did it. Finally cleaned that stupid crock pot that's been on my table for actual months with that like one bit of rot. And uh, it was a lesson learned and, and actually I used the same method later in the episode. If you're curious, because I, I didn't find the process to be terribly obvious, but uh, you have to throw it into water. Don't, don't place it. You, you gotta throw it so it's gotta be loose in the water and then and then the rot floats out of it but there we go we salt our meats we have enough enough salt um it works out to be i think two salt per meat so i had 16 uh meats so therefore 32 salt salt is that is my math correct on that and then i also wanted to make some brine to pickle some some vegetables um, and this is, you know, this is the process I'm going to be doing in order to make preserved goods for the winter time. 
um, because they last a lot longer. I think vegetables last uh, about three times as long when they're pickled and uh, meats last a ridiculous amount of time. I think they could last like act an actual year um, when they're they're uh, salt preserved. But um, yeah, I gotta get back, back to our bees. Like I say, I'm not taking any of this for granted. All of these are the result of a lot of time and patience. And so, you know, if I, I'm gonna show you me grabbing the honey from the bees because god god damn that was a lot of uh time i had to to get to that as well as farming you know the farming is it's also a big deal it's all a big deal you know so although it might extend or lengthen some of these episodes um i i and enjoy the inclusion of it but hey uh, look here's another milestone the results of our uh having tanned a lot of the, the pelts and furs that we got and i made myself a leather backpack there was only one slot left that i didn't i uh, hadn't made a uh, linen bag so i decided to replace it with a leather backpack which is a three uh slot improvement i believe might even be six slot but no i think the i think the basket was three slots and the leather backpack is six slots Get some more salt from the kern uh this is the small amount of salt that i had mined from um just discovering the halite so we're just kind of burning through that as i uh as i grind it in the kern but we went ahead I, I've, i'm now pickling some parsnips and some turnips um or i, I might have been carrots but at, anyway at the end of this video i have um turnips parsnips carrots and onions all uh, being pickled a full not not quite a full stack it's actually 50 confusingly per barrel anyway uh, I finally have armor <laughs> this is like three or four overlapping milestones there but I have leather armor and the the leather ar armor is um, good because you can actually upgrade it to chain mail and then eventually the chain mail to scale mail um, there's probably, I mean, someone in the chat, you're, you're welcome to let me know what the advantages and disadvantages are of plate mail and scale mail. Um, but I've decided, I, I kind of, I'm kind of opting, I'm leaning towards scale mail just because I think it looks, it's just cooler conceptually. I like it more. Um, it might not be as realistic, but I, you know, whatever. Um, we, you might've missed it there. I just found my first nugget of sylvite and our halite and that turns into potash the potash is really interesting because it um is used to permanently upgrade uh our our uh, fertile land for the crops so that is a actually a very excellent find um i didn't realize that that was something we wanted nor did i realize or understand that it was a thing that existed in the game so i, I was pretty excited in on that discovery the farmland is going to be eating well with that improvement but i am worried i probably don't have enough to even upgrade like one greenhouse worth uh it doesn't matter but you know we are going to be making uh, probably in the next episode i'll want to take a lot of our bone meal salt peter and yeah potash um and like make a permanent upgrade to our farmland so that it has the maximum amount of yield it's not something i'm going to like super care about um, because I'm happy to ha get anything from the farm, but you know, it's, it's still something we should do if we can But uh, now that we have like a, an absolute truckload of salt I go ahead and fill this these are all barrels that I've gone ahead and, and made extras of and I wanted to just like have a, a very industrious pickling area um, That's the benefit of making a huge house is you can you can you know, oh, I need to do X thing Well, why don't we do X thing? at like ridiculous levels of you know of it <laughs> like let's just like do it at a, on exhaustion um but anyway enjoy our, our last meal and uh clean our, our bit of there was one crock pot had spoiled unfortunately i was trying to get through those meals before they spoiled but i missed one but it's fine we're we've almost got a full barrel of rot again so that's nice these are the last two barrels of uh, brine and there goes the onions and i think uh, well, i guess i don't do anything there but uh, i decided to leave this episode um with a nice kind of backdrop because it feels good you know like I, I, as, as i say this i feel established at this point i'm pickling things i've got animals and i've got a working windmill that's amazing i hope you enjoyed this definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this i'll see you guys next time take it easy